So we now uh, get into the final session of the day. Um, and just a couple of things before I introduce the person who is going to lead uh, this, this, the first part of the final session. Um, keep tweeting. We're actually now a top 10 trending subject on tweets in the UK, and we're rapidly <laughs> racing up the charts. So, so get, get tweeting. And, and thanks to Tula, wherever Tula is from our team, who's been leading that. She's doing a fantastic job. The other thing I just wanted to say is to make a, a little point about the resolutions that I think it's important that we all keep in mind. In this room, we may think that the wording of the resolutions can be better, it can be more tangible, it can be more actionable, and it can be. And one of the things we want you to do coming out of this uh, you know, session today and the session tomorrow is actually make that happen. However, the most important objective that we have set for One Young World is that One Young World is going to influence the world's leaders and is going to change the way people think. And to everybody in this room, to say that global business must be more socially responsible, that global business has to care more about climate and about poverty is obvious. You're all like, yeah, of course. Why even bother asking the question? To Way too many of the businesses out there in the world, they're not thinking it's important, they're not acting like that, and they're doing some of you know, the things that we had comments about in terms of greenwashing and those kind of things. So don't underestimate the importance and power of saying that 84, 85% of the, of the people, the delegates of One Young World, believe that business must be more socially responsible, it must address poverty, and it must address climate. Because that will be a kind of wake-up call to a whole bunch of the global leaders of businesses that we need to influence and impact. So at a macro level, some of these things may, you know, you kind of go, well, it's obvious, but it's obvious to your generation. It's not obvious to a whole bunch of people who are in senior positions at the moment. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. And then we'll get into a fantastic uh, and sporty session now. Um, I'm going to introduce to you Nick Keller, who's going to lead it and, and run it. Nick is a, a terrific guy, very high energy. He's the founder of Beyond Sport, which basically uh, funds and supports the development of, of sports as, as a way of improving uh, you know, so, social values and playing a social role in the world. He's an advisor uh, to Davos and advises Davos and the World Economic Forum on the role that sport can actually play in society. And uh, whilst he's not quite as young as you, a few years ago, he was named the, the Young Media UK Entrepreneur of the Year. So a big uh, One Young World welcome to Nick. Away, so. um, good afternoon. You must all be feeling uh, a little awed by the day. I haven't seen uh, many sort of conferences that have been so exhausting. So as this is a sports panel, I'm going to start a little unusually and let's get the circulation going. Can everyone stand up quickly? I know this is just wriggle around a little bit, just wave the arms in the air. You've all been drinking coffee all day, biscuits, you're looking out of shape and just move yourself around, a little jog on the spot maybe. <laughs> All right, sit down now. Hopefully you feel a little refreshed. Um, so, um, I'm here to talk about sport, and it's an interesting time to be talking about sport and its role in society, because we wouldn't say it's been a fantastic year for sport. If we go back to February 2009, um, we had the shooting of the Sri Lankan cricket team in Pakistan. We've had a, a diplomatic incident between Egypt and Algeria. Um, we've had the shooting um, and tragedy around the Togo uh, team. And more recently, um, it's difficult to pick up a newspaper, certainly in this country, um, to see that a number of very high-profile icons have um, Come a bit of a, as we call a cropper in this country. You only need to pick up the paper today um, to realize that. But it's not all dreary news because, actually, as of today, um, if we look at the Oscar nominations, Invictus, the most amazing, uplifting story of sport, how sport can bring a nation together, um, the 1995 Rugby World Cup, Nelson Mandela saying to the people, get behind the Springboks, the ultimate almost symbol um, of apartheid, the, the rugby team, um, the Africana sport, and Nelson Mandela supporting that team for that, probably the first time, brought that nation together. 
And then if we take that sense of optimism and forward wind to this summer, and we think how exciting it is that a, the FIFA World Cup will be taking place um, in South Africa, more than just sport really, isn't it? Um, it goes beyond the boundaries of sport into our society, into our communities. Um, and finally, and very recently, um, New Orleans, 30 billion, 30 billion gallons of water tipped into that city, um, devastated under five years ago. And um, they won the Super Bowl and the New Orleans Saints. And it was just a remarkable story. And um, sport played such a crucial part in the rehabilitation of getting that city back on its feet. It's a very passionate sport city. Um, and it really did help. The, the team went back in. And it was a real, um, you speak to anyone from Orleans, and they'll tell you it was a very um, potent moment. So what happened? Um, a couple of nights ago. I'm just going to take a couple of quotes because they're, they're quite remarkable. This is of a lady who lost her home. Um, we still remember Katrina, but the Saints winning makes us look to the future and forget the past. Um, they represent the rebirth of our city. And this is my personal favorite. This is the pinnacle of my life. Now I can die. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we know now that sport really, and one of my questions to you guys is what does sport mean to you? Um, have you seen it as a hobby, a pastime, something to slouch in front of the TV um, with your fast food and just sit and, sit and watch sport? Do you see the benefits for participation, for health? Um, the World Economic Forum talks about the biggest risks to humankind. The biggest risk to humankind is chronic illness. Obesity, cancer, heart disease. Now there's a thought, isn't it? And what role can sport and fitness play in that? That's the World Economic Forum, I'm not just making that up. Um, what does it do in ter terms of shaping leadership, teams, personal confidence, the humanistic benefits? And finally, something we don't talk about a huge amount, but what role can sport play as a platform, as a catalyst for change? Um, Sitting here today, you've been talking about a lot of issues, whether it be education, health, dignity, human dignity, into dialogue. And I suppose what we want to turn around and say to you is think about sport as one of those tools. Because sport has the ability to bring people together, to challenge ignorance, and act as a way to reach out to young people around the world.